All right. So I am so excited to have Dallin and Bella Lambert on the podcast. Thank today. you. We're excited We're to be so here. We're so excited. Yeah. yeah. You know what's so crazy about this? These guys are 26 and 23 years old. Man. <laughs> Your baby. You're, yeah. You guys, you guys are just like little kids. <laughs> crazy. Um, so what, what, what's really cool about, I think, what we're going to get into today is just, I mean, all the things that they've done, where they're going. Um, you know, I talked to these guys a year ago uh, about what they were wanting to do. And these guys are executors. It's crazy uh, that was a year ago. Right? It's, it's wild. so weird to think back to that night. I can't believe where we are now. Yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, I mean, seeing the excitement that they had at that point in time and the thing that really gets me excited um, to actually share with you guys, again, it's just back to that execu ex execution point. Um, you know, every, a lot of people talk about doing things, but most people don't go out and get it done, and you guys are doing it. So, oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I really yeah. appreciate you guys. So, um, give me, give me just the 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 high level. When did you guys meet? So, I had a party at my house, and mm -hmm. I invited a friend who invited a friend who invited Dallin. So, I was like, like the last invite, man. Yeah, <laughs> lucky. He showed up, and we actually became friends for a year, and then we started dating. Wow, so, but yeah, we, was cool. We stayed like friends for a while, and yeah kind of crazy then we got married and we just had our three-year anniversary yesterday. yesterday actually i saw that yeah. yeah. nothing's nothing secret in the social media no <laughs> it's not we put everything out there yeah, yeah i it's love it crazy. cool so here, here's some questions that uh we dive into with every guest so and if you guys want to both answer fine if just one of you does whatever so who's had the greatest impact in your life hmm. i saw that question it's a it's a good one i think dallin has <laughs> had the greatest impact in my life i don't want to be cheesy but for real, um, ever since I married Dallin, I feel like together we're like a team and everything we do, I feel like we support each other and we're, we have very different strengths, but I don't know. I feel like he's definitely been the biggest impact in my life. Okay. So you can't answer Bella. Yeah. You can't. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm now. stuck <laughs> now. No, I mean, this also sounds cheesy too, but I got, I got to say my mom. Yeah. yeah. No, I love it. Yeah. That's like. Great. I think like growing up, I always had a really good relationship with my mom. And when I wanted to kind of like take different endeavors in life, especially within like the last couple of years, she was always like my, my support, like oh, that's pushing awesome. me on. So Aww. yeah, that's yeah. Cool. going to cry watching Yeah. This. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Well, well got to make sure mom true. hears this. Yeah. yeah she's cool. Awesome. So if you could narrow it down to one thing that has had the greatest impact on your success, what would it be? Mm. Perseverance. Yeah. I would say perseverance. I think that when times get hard, it really shows like how are you going to react to things and are you going to persevere through them? I think that's had the greatest impact for me. There was definitely times where it was hard for me um, getting started in my business and even on YouTube, there's a lot of negative comments or a lot of people who tell you that you can't do something. And for me, persevering through that time has always helped me. That's awesome. That's yeah, I think 100%. I think especially um starting social media and youtube the the first couple of months is always the hardest you feel like you're not growing you feel like there's no success and then once you just kind of break through that and things just kind of start rolling and things start happening is when it all just starts coming together but you got to just keep grinding and persevering for that through that beginning so are you guys saying that life isn't all roses no <laughs> i wish <laughs> i wish no man there's there's a lot of behind the scenes that people don't see I mean, of course, I think especially with us, with social media, we're only going to post and put out there the highlights, the best. Yeah. And no one really sees what really goes on and, and what we do, which I'm excited to talk, talk about. Yeah. Like those. Behind the scenes, yeah. 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 Because it's, especially with Bella's story, she's put in so many hours, so much work to, to be at where she's at now. So. Yeah, that's cool. It's inspiring. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah it is. So, um, you know, one of the goals here at the Investing for Freedom podcast, I really want to remember uh, The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah I love course. The Wizard of Oz. You know, and that the, the wizard's there behind the curtain and yeah. he's making yeah. all that stuff. Like, that, I want to get behind the curtain. Yeah, perfect. Because, awesome. you know, you got this big production happening, but then people don't understand the blood, sweat, tears. I mean, literally tears sometimes that go into right. running oh, yeah. businesses. And, and, you know, we talk a lot about um, jobs. People hate their jobs and everything else. Well, it's, it's not any it's not any easier on the other side of that. In fact, running a business or having your own brand or any of that could actually be more gut wrenching. So yeah, I'm excited sure. to get into that. Um, what was your greatest setback and what did you learn from it? Well, in the beginning of starting my business, um, we actually ran out of chains, which I have a jewelry business. So if you run out of chains, like you're not able to even like wear the lockets that we sell. 
Um, and that was a big setback for us. Um, and I always talk about that story because it's just so funny to, to think at the time we thought that was like the biggest crisis and we weren't going to make it out of that. But then that was just like a little bump in the road. And a lot of times, um, say, Oh, you're so lucky. Success is just like this perfect little straight line to the top. And for me, I feel like it's been like this like roller coaster of like the ups and the downs and like little bumps in the road like that. Um, there have been so many others, like that's not the only thing, but um in my business, I would say that. And then in our YouTube channel, I would say like all the negative comments. Sometimes I feel like they don't affect Dallin as much as sometimes they affect me. Like I'll be like I just gotta say, man, some girls are mean to girls out yeah, there sometimes. I yeah. know. I feel like it's a little different you know, guy to guy, but yeah, there's just so many negative comments, but Dallin luckily has helped me kind of move past the, like, I don't really care as much anymore, but there have been some yeah, that have it can been be like, tough. wow, that was really mean. Yeah. So yeah, that's I just brutal. think like, you gotta, you gotta think of maybe what, what that person is going through exactly. or why they would, why they would say that or kind of maybe understand a little bit about them. And I mean, if it's real bad, you just delete it and move on or, or just keep it up and Maybe use it to motivate you and yeah. keep grinding. Bunch yeah. of haters. Now right? they kind of motivate me because it's like, wow, how cool is it that we have people who actually take time out of their day, like have all these comments. We have some negative, some positive. Like that's cool that people are commenting on our stuff. Like yeah. I feel like bad exposure is still good exposure. So what is the piece of advice you find yourself sharing the most? Hmm. I think um I think uh for me, kind of goes along with that last question, but persevering, like, just don't stop. I mean, once you have an idea and once you have a goal and you have something that, that you want to accomplish, go after it and realize that there's going to be these setbacks, realize there's going to be bumps in the road, but, but don't stop because yeah. you already have this idea. You already have most likely a plan put in place, so it, it can be done. You can get it. there. That's awesome. Yeah, the num number one thing that I always say is no matter how young or how old you are, you can absolutely go after your dream. I love that. I feel like that's the number one thing. I just feel like people get so stuck on either their age or it's either I'm too young to do something or uh, I'm too old to even start something at this point or just I'm not good enough. And I feel like it doesn't matter how young or how old you are. You can go after it if you believe in yourself. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Um, I, I don't want to camp on this, but one of the things that we talk about over and over is the five keys to freedom. What do you really want? Mm -hmm. Really want. Why do you want it? What are you going to do to get it? Measure results and adjust along the way. Yeah, that's perfect. So like when I hear the advice that you're given, um, and you guys are obviously very clear on what you want out of life. So without going into the whole formula, what do you actually really want? What, what drives you guys every day? I mm. think like what I, I, I just love when, when someone brings in that, that good comment that, hey, we brightened up their day, we, we helped them out in some way, brought them some entertainment, some happiness, whatever it can be, that's just really like what keeps me going out there. That's what I love. Yeah, we just opened a P.O. box actually and we link it in every YouTube video and it's cool because people actually send us letters and yesterday that's we were awesome. opening these letters from all over the country and it's people who say that our YouTube channels impacted them in some way. And it's just, it's silly because our videos are so lighthearted and just fun and silly. But the fact that like someone would say, I had a really rough day at school. I turned on your YouTube channel and it brightened my day like that makes it so worth it to us. Um, and also just like in my business, it's cool to see people also achieving financial freedom through my business. And that I just, that makes me so happy. And we always say at Origami Al, we want to be a force for good. We want to make a difference in people's lives. And I think that at the end of the day, if I know that I had a part in doing that for even one person, that makes it so worth it to me. That's so awesome. So I always say that I think if you want to live more, you have to give more. Yeah. And yeah. that's what kind of, that's what kind of drives me. I mean, I have two, I have two, two things that I really, so my personal freedom, my time freedom, um, that's a huge thing for me. I heard Robert Kiyosaki one day say that wealth can be measured in the amount of days that you don't have to go to work. Yeah, totally. And so for me, and, and by the way, that's subjective because it's different for you and it's different for you and it's different for me. It's not some monetary target of, oh, you got to be worth a million or a hundred million dollars. Somebody could be completely personally free and be, so when we say, what do you really want? So one person could maybe just want to make $15 a day. Right. And that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Like if that. That's your thing then. Yeah. So you. it's not really ever about money. And so when I hear, you know, what you guys are passionate about and reading those letters and origami owl and that 
you know, helping people achieve financial freedom. That's that's amazing. So I commend you guys. for Yeah, I also I think it's important to always think people over profit. I feel like when you're helping people and you're reaching out to people or you're being kind to others or you're thinking of people first, I feel like that's when the profits come. And we've really seen that in my business. Uh, We really at Origami All focus a lot on people and developing people and helping them grow and helping them find their passion. And so it's cool to see how that does translate into profit in the long run. And we're never really thinking about like, how are we going to inspire someone so we can make money? That's not what we're thinking. We're thinking, how can we really help someone in their life? And it's cool to see how that can help not only them in their business and in their life, but also us as well. I've got real lucky because Origami Owl has been uh, around a lot longer than since I've kicked off this YouTube thing. So luckily her and her mom have already set these like this, like people over profit. So I've just kind of grabbed these these little things that I've learned from Morgami. I'm like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna use this and jumping into YouTube and I think that's why we've had the success that we've had in such little time. Because Bella's kind of already established these values and these I don't want to say sayings, but Yeah. And we core beliefs. Yeah, beliefs. Yeah. There we yeah. go. And we've used that and now everything and I think that's really helped us. Yeah, that's the th- I. So I think that that's one of the you just pointed out one of the keys that I think is a, a super big key to success. When you when you live principle based, whether it's a good principle or a bad principle, that's what everything's founded on. And yeah. so when you have, you know, we say sayings, but literally people over profit. If that's a saying that's up on a wall, it's not going to do anything for you. But if it's truly a core value, which I can tell it is with you guys, then that drives everything that happens in your entire world. And so the nice thing is you've built this foundation and this principle. And it doesn't matter what you go on and do, it, it, you, you get to take that list and that group of people and that community and that following that you've built right. um, with you. So it's pretty amazing. Um, I, I love the way you pointed that out. So it would be unfair if we continued to talk about all the amazing things we could talk about without really digging into Origami Owl and yeah. where this all started. Because you were 15. 14. Right? 14. 14, man. I was 14 years it's old. Wild. Yeah, it's It's crazy to always reflect on my story. So I'm 23 years old now, but I started my business when I was 14 years old. The reason I started it is because I went to my parents and I said, you're going to buy me a car for my 16th birthday, right? And I remember- Just thinking ahead. Yeah, I was thinking ahead. I was preparing. And they looked at me and they laughed and they said, in this family, we work for the things that we have. And so if you want a car, you're going to have to work for it. And so I started babysitting. I earned $250 and um, I went to my parents and I said, okay- what do I do now? I'm never going to get a car. And I was getting frustrated. And they said, well, why don't you start a business or something? And I was like, "Um, hello, I'm 14 years old. Like, how am I supposed to start a business? Um, But the cool thing about my parents is they've always believed and inspired me since I was a really young girl. So they they totally believed in me. They're like, you could do this. Like, if you want to start something, you could do it. And so basically, that's what I did. I decided to start a business at 14 years old. I started selling um, I, I named it Origami Owl, where we sell customizable jewelry. I've always been passionate about jewelry since I was really little. And I loved making jewelry that was meaningful to me, whether it had like my birthstone or my favorite color or my initials on it. I loved that. And so we opened up Origami Owl, started selling it around in the area. So like out of my house and I would go to little boutiques on the weekends after school, I would work. And um, we started selling the lockets that you fill with charms. And in the beginning, they started taking off. And it was crazy because to me, I would make like $200 one night and I would just, I would like, I couldn't handle (laughs) how crazy that was to me. I was like, I worked for like three months babysitting. I earned $250. And in one night I just made $200. I remember I told my mom like, we're eating good tonight. (laughs) And so it's crazy to look back um, on that. We ended up um, from there, from doing like the boutiques and selling the jewelry out of my house, we opened up a mall kiosk at the Chandler Mall. I don't know if you've ever been to the Chandler Mall. We were right outside of Abercrombie and Fitch. Wow. Yeah. And I would go in almost every day after school and I would just work. And that for for me, like as a 14-year-old girl, that's a sacrifice because you want to hang out with your friends when you're in high school. And um, I had so many things I had to do, like my homework. I'd be doing homework at the cash register. And so there was that side of it. And then I started seeing the success that I had. And I knew that if I could impact other people, it would just be so cool. And so we ended up opening up the company as social selling. And basically anybody could go online, buy a kit of the product and sell it themselves. And so that's what we did. We did not anticipate the 
amount of growth that we were about to have. We had no idea. We were expecting maybe a thousand people to sign on um, within a year or two. And um, within a couple months, we had reached that goal. And it was so insane to just see the explosion of growth. We always compared it to a bowling ball rolling down a hill because we felt like the company was just taking off so fast and um, we just could not believe it. And so um, where it's at today, we have 25,000 amazing designers. We call them our amazing designers um, who sell the jewelry. And um, when, so when we hit, we hit a crazy goal, we actually reached $250 million in, within a couple of years of opening wow. Origami Owl, which was explosive growth. We were one of the fastest social selling companies to ever start. And um, when I look back at that, it just, it, it's just really crazy and yeah. like humbling to see how something that was seriously started at our kitchen table could have even reached that amount of money or success. Um, but now my main priority and my main focus is to help other people. And it's cool that through Origami Owl, we're able to do that. And I mean, I could talk about Origami Owl yeah. all day. We might need another 45 minutes after Love this because it. it's just, it's, it's so cool to reflect on and to think about um, all the things that have happened with it, but I just feel really blessed and really grateful. Be before, before we move on. So a lot of people hear stories like that and they say, okay, great. Bella can do that. Yeah. Did, did you have like this? I mean, I even heard you, st I, I heard, I heard Dallin say, um, you know, you were looking ahead for, you just wanted a car. Yeah. So like, can anybody do this or what, what was like, what set you apart? What made this thing blow up? Yeah. So it's funny because I do get people who say that all the time. Oh, that's great for you. But I could never do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I seriously think to myself, I was a normal 14 year old girl. And the craziest thing is if I wouldn't have just like had the courage to just try, I would have never known what could have happened. Imagine if I would have gotten a thousand dollars, just bought a used car and then just stopped. Like mm -hmm. I would have never seen the success that we've had. And luckily I had amazing people who supported me. We actually have co-founders, Sean, um, Sean Maxwell, Tyson Basha, and my amazing mom. And it, it's cool to see what you could do when you're surrounded by amazing people who want to lift you up. And also if you just believe in yourself, um, if I just, it's, <laughs> it's just crazy to think about. Like I could have just been happy with the $250 babysitting and just continued to babysit. Or it's cool to see that I decided to invest in myself and to just take a take a leap of faith and try yeah. something yeah did you have a clear plan or were you just rolling with it honestly just rolling with it we yeah. had no idea what we were doing and um a little backstory that i don't really share often is it's cool because my mom and my dad always believed in me and when we started the business we didn't have a lot of money as a family and so um we lived like a pretty average life i would say and um one day i came home from school and this was like right when we were transitioning into the mall kiosk time. So it was like pretty early on in the business and all of our couches were gone out of our house. And I was like, where did our couches go, mom? Because my mom's an interior designer. She always has loved like these leather couches that she had were like her favorite thing. And they were gone. And I said, where did they go? And she said, well, I believe in you. So I sold the couches so I, we can make wow. some extra money to be able to help you in your business. And I remember I was like 14 at the time. So I was like, wow, that's cool that she believed in me enough to do that. Yeah. And um, then a couple months later, she ended up selling the diamond out of her wedding ring um, because we still needed more money for the business. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like little things that people don't see in the behind the scenes that yeah. really helped the success of the business. And it's cool to see how she believed in me and believed in my dreams and wanted us to be able to be successful. Oh, and I did get my car. I ended up getting a Jeep. Her name is Alice. O W L I C E. Nice. Like owl origami owl. Yeah, that's good. great. Um I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get it? So um it's cool because every time I see that car, I think about where this all started. And it reminds me of the dream that I had. But now it's cool because I feel like that dream has been passed on to other people who are able to go and reach their own dreams through Origami Owl. So that is so awesome. I appreciate you sharing that, you know, just getting transparent and, and we're gonna get into this a little bit more as well, but talk more about the YouTube and yeah, yeah. and the haters and um, <laughs> you know, people sometimes think that there's two sides to this, right? People think, oh, okay, you know, Dallin and Bella can do that. I can't. Mm -hmm. But 
we're all the same, right? Exactly. The only thing that differentiates, I think people, you, you guys touched on this um, off, off mic, but it's grit, it's hard work, it's just taking one step at a time. When you really look at the five keys to freedom, um, that adjust, I think is super important because you had this dream and vision, but you didn't see a $250 million company or whatever it is no. three years or five years later or whatever that number was. Um, you didn't see that necessarily, right? And so you've got this idea and it's just putting one foot in front of the other and taking your, your mom sold your couches. I know. Like, it's, and it's so many experiences like that, like so many sacrifices. And I think that is also a big, another big word when it comes to success is sacrifice. Like what are you willing to sacrifice to be able to become successful? And for me, it is kind of weird. I hate talking about myself, like to say that I'm successful, um, but I feel like we put in so many sacrifices in our journey to be able to get to where we are today you earned it and I feel like yeah I feel like we did earn it and I'm really proud of that and yeah. it's it's just crazy yeah that's exciting um so I've found myself saying this a lot lately until the pain of your current situation becomes stronger than the pain it's going to take to get there you won't do anything about it oh, I like that. and so just even you know thinking through all that the blood sweat tears the grit selling couches, selling your mom. Your mom sold her diamond. I know. And the crazy thing is she actually never got a new diamond. She um, bought a $5 CZ off of Amazon and put that in her diamond. Um, and she still wears that. And she, it's like a reminder of her to her that where we came from and where we started, it keeps her humble. And also it's cool because she, pro she definitely could buy herself a diamond now yeah. if she wanted to. But it's the principle to her of the sacrifices she made to get to where she is today. That's so, so. good. I feel like it's so cool. That's awesome. That's why, again, and not to hit it too much, but what do you really want? Yeah. You know, it's not necessarily fame and fortune and diamonds. And I mean, that's all cool, whatever, but it's all relative. Right. Exactly. What do you really want? You want to help people. You guys are out there. I, I know freedom's a big thing for you guys, and I don't want to go there yet, but I mm -hmm. think when we get into the YouTube channel and the traveling and everything you guys do, I mean, I can just see that from the outside. Um, enjoying life. You guys are so passionate at everything you do. So what do you really want? Why do you want it? It's amazing to talk about. I'm so inspired by your story. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, of, of course. course. Yeah. Thank you. I could listen to it all day. I've heard it <laughs> yeah, right? 500 times, man. But So there's a couple of things before we move off of Origami Al that I want to just... Um, so what, I remember you telling me a story that I think it was you. Um, you were at school and you'd be in the bathroom like yes. writing. <laughs> tell, tell me that. Yeah, so it's funny because um, when we had the mall kiosk, we actually would, I made a business card because I was a businesswoman now. Yeah. And Wait, how old were you? I was 14. Okay. Uh, with so, the mall kiosk, weren't you, you're probably 15 now. No, I was like 14 Are you still 14? Half. Yeah, still 14. Jeez. It happened really fast. And so we ended up, I had a flip phone at the time. I was so cool. And I put my business, my phone number on every business card that we would give out. And we gave out a couple hundred um, at that mall kiosk. And so... After Christmas, which was when everybody was buying our origami owl lockets, um, I started getting nonstop phone calls when I was in school. I'd be sitting in class and my phone would just be constantly buzzing. And it was because we didn't have a website yet and we didn't have a phone number for origami owl. We had nothing. And so people were just like grasping onto this business card, trying to get a hold of us to buy more gifts or to buy a locket for a friend. And so I would go to the bathroom. I would say, hi, this is Bella from origami owl. How may I help you? And there would be toilets flushing in the background. I'm like, this is a very professional business center. What are you talking about? Um, and I would take down orders on my arm and on my leg. I would write them down and I would go home and I would literally fill orders from my arm. I would be like, man, I hope that was a two writing it down on um, the order. And it, it's just, that's so funny to look back on because yeah. we were grinding. Even when I was in school, like I was trying to work my business. Yeah, that's so crazy. Okay, so one other thing that I just want to make sure before we move on. Um, you said a lot there about Origami Al and, you know, your amazing co-founders and um, just your philosophy on people over profit. Tell me about the Owl's Nest. <laughs> the Nest, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we call our headquarters the Nest. Um, Origami Owl, Nest, Owl's Nest. You know, yeah, we, totally. we like to be I witty and funny. I see, you see it. I know you see it. Um, but it's so cool. It's um, about 80,000 square feet. It's in Chandler. And we have the most incredible team members on the planet. Like our team members are incredible. And we have an aqua blue slide at our nest from the top floor to the bottom floor. You can just think of like the most like perfect office. That's just like fun, <laughs> so dreamy, fun. like that's the spot. It's so fun. And um, it's just so cool because 
everybody that works there embodies our mission statement, which is something that we we were so passionate about. Um, and it's been our mission since the very beginning. And it's to be a force for good, to make a difference in people's lives. And um, that's what we really preach at Oregon Meal. And everybody who walks in there always says, wow, it just it feels so different here. There's an amazing energy here. And that's really, it comes from our team members and the people that work there and um, people who are passionate about what they do. And so I feel so lucky to be surrounded by so many incredible people at our nest. It's so fun. I love it. And the reason why I really wanted to dig on that, because, you know, coming from the investment world, um, we're always talking about leverage. So you can get more done. You can buy more properties with leverage, borrowing money from banks, et cetera. Right. But what's more important to me and leverage works in all areas of life. You can, in order to do something different or get to somewhere different than where you currently are, it's Einstein's definition of insanity, right? Like right. doing the same thing over and over and get, expecting different results. If you don't leverage something different than what you're currently using or utilizing in your life, then you're not going to change anything. And what I hear you saying over and over and over, it's people over profit. It's the team. Mm-hmm. And I fully believe that if you want to do anything amazing in life, you've got to leverage other people's talents and abilities and their real core giftings. Absolutely. And not only their gifts, but what do they really want? So when we start talking about, you know, the five keys to freedom, what drives them? Everybody that comes on this show, we want to talk about what's, what's the why behind, what, you know, let's get behind the curtain. Why are you really doing what you're doing? But when you look at your employees or the people that are working with you or even business partners, what are, what are they really wanting? And when you have that true mission of people over profit, what did, tell me your mission again. So our mission is to be a force for good, to love, inspire, and motivate people of all ages to reach their dreams and empower them to make a difference in the lives of others. That's the full mission. I don't know if I've ever heard anything from a business mission statement that embodies what I really believe on the five keys to success, to freedom, because you're really empowering that. Like you're empowering them to success. You're motivating them. You're really, how how do you figure out what they want? Is there like a process at Origami Al that you get into that or is it just identifying do we all want the same thing? Is that what really what it is? Yeah, I think like what our team members want. I feel like our team members are so passionate about what they do. And I feel like we try to work with them and we try to make sure that they're happy. And that the thing is, when it comes to team members, a lot of times people are working their nine to five job because, you know, they need to make money. Yeah. But at Origami Owl, we try to inspire them at their time when they're there to be able to go after Origami Owl and just leave the nest, spread their wings and do what they're passionate about. Like maybe what they're doing at Origami Owl isn't their complete passion, but we hope that when they're there at Origami Owl that they can learn what their passion is and they can go and do that. And so it's funny because when team members leave, as sad as it is, we're always so happy for them because they're going and they're they're reaching their passion and they're they're going after their dreams. A lot of people are there because they're passionate about helping people. And that's what we do at Origami Owl. Um, I think that's the thing that we do the best. And Um, it's cool to see our team members embody that as well and want to be a part of that and want to make a difference. And so I feel like the people who are with us right now are our team players. They're our, they're just incredible and they just want to make a difference. Wow. That's amazing. You guys have an annual convention. Yes, we do. How many people go to that? Um, like four to 5,000 people. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. crazy. It's so stressful. (laughs) (laughs) How about for you? Is it stressful for you, Dallin? Not so much for me. I just got to, I'm there to support He's her. He's the biggest cheerleader. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I got to keep her grounded. Yeah, and totally. She, yeah, it's a lot of pressure for her. She's speaking a lot. She sings around 4,000 designers that love her and want to be with her. And yeah. it can well, be I a love lot. Them. Yeah. It pulls a ton of energy out of you, I bet. Yeah, but it's always, I feel like it's a big family reunion whenever all of us get together because it's just people I love who are doing what they're passionate about and wanting to better themselves. And so. I love our convention. It's so fun. Does it give you energy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. At the end of it, I'm like, I feel so motivated. I'm like, I could just run a marathon right now. Let's do this. I just feel so excited. Do you crash a couple days after or like right after? Like (laughs) literally right after I crash and then I get back up and I'm motivated again. She's got to take a couple days, but then after that, right back in. I got to commend you, Dallin. I mean, she said at the beginning that you're like the most influential person in her life. So, man, that's pretty cool to to see how you guys like flow together. Okay. So origami owls. Awesome. You guys, I mean, that's just amazing what you've done, but I've loved watching your guys' journey together. So you just celebrated three years yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Three years. Um, I don't know when I actually met you guys. It's probably been a year and a half, two years, maybe. Yeah. Probably. probably. Yeah. 
I think the first time we officially met was at the lake on a boat ramp <laughs> on your guys' boat. Nice. That's so fun. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think so, because then there was that issue. Yeah, we I bro- we hit the prop. Something like that, yeah. yeah totally. And then, yeah. but yeah, I think that was the first time we Yeah, we and met. then you guys went and got your boat and came That's back right. out. That's right. Yep, yep, got it. Um, Yeah, a little plug for my son. Um, I, I met you guys through my son, Dylan, right? right. Yeah. Who's a professional wake surfer. He's we always saw best. Dylan at the lake, and I was like, I want to be able to surf like that kid. He's taught me so much. He's incredible. Yeah. I, awesome. I want to be like kid. Dylan. He's a good kid. <laughs> Yeah, Dylan's a good guy. He's awesome. Um, this is just another example of you guys being so giving in everything that you do. And, you know, a lot of times we live in our own head. We live in our world every day. There's a bunch of chaos and confusion in our own brains. But watching you guys from the outside and everything you do, it, it comes back to people over profit. I, I truly believe that. I see that as a principle in your life. You guys have been so influential in my son's life. You guys have taught me a ton. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. No, really. I mean, just like sitting at dinner with you guys one time, just you guys were... We, we invited you over, number one, because we like you, but number two, Thank because you. our son was, you know, he was kind of growing and I yeah. saw some gifts that you guys had and really wanted to just get together. And I was inspired after that. So I really appreciate your guys' energy and drive. Of course. Thank you. Okay. So let's, let's dig into, you guys are like in this whole other um, phase of life, I think. And not the origami owl, it's not still a big part of it, but tell me where you're at. What are you guys working on? Yeah. So, uh, well, throwing it back a couple of years. Um, I always loved social media. I always thought that you could grow with it. There's a lot of opportunity. I loved, I liked photography. I liked doing videos and it was a way to like kind of showcase what, what we did and we love traveling. And so it's funny, we kind of did a, like a, we started a little Instagram page, started putting like our travel photos on there. What was that called? It's called life through postcards. Okay. It was cool. We actually like took postcards from our travels and sent them out to people until it kind of started getting a little bigger. And all of a sudden I'm, Coming oh, home with a stack of like 200 postcards trying to get it out to people. Yeah, I remember one time we ended up writing like 500 postcards yeah, and insane. mailing them out to people. <laughs> and it was cool to see how we created this little community on Instagram of people who just wanted, who a lot of people said, oh, I feel like I'll never be able to go to this place. Send me a postcard there. Or some people would say, it's my dream to go to this place. I want this postcard to put on my door so I mm. can go there. And I just think that's so cool um, that we were able to create that little community. So when we started Origami Owl, it was all about a car. Right. That yeah. was the why at yeah. that point in time, which is just crazy, right? Yeah. I, know it, I know it changed and morphed, but were you guys a little bit more strategic about life through postcards? Was there a real reason behind it, or did you, did you guys just say, we're just going to do life through I think postcards? Our, I think our reason was that, man, I just looked at like some of these other people that would, for some, some reason or another, would never be able to travel to these places that we went to, and I wanted to bring them a little piece of, like Bella said, a little piece of that place through a postcard. Yeah. And uh, that was cool. But then it kind of just, I don't know. I don't think it I really. Feel like, I feel like we were trying to document our travels as well and have it in one place so we could look back at it. I feel like it was like the most fun time in our life. And we wanted to document those memories and yeah. share it with the world. So kind of what we did. So let me ask a different question then. Um, you guys are obviously blessed and fortunate, but it, it's, not, it's not like it was all just given to you. You guys, you guys have grinded. We'll talk more about that. You worked your tail off as a teenager and you guys are still, I mean, it looks great on the surface and right. everything's, yeah. you know, the 15 minute video that goes up is that's blood, sweat and tears for like hours and hours and hours of thoughts and yeah. things. Right. So with life through postcards, I know you guys were already traveling. Was there, is there a way that people can begin to earn their freedom through, was there a, like any kind of monetary benefit or, or, or was that just not even part of the conversation? Free hotels or something or? I mean, that was kind of. Maybe in the back of the mind, but it never was really the the main focus. I knew I had a lot of friends that were in the social media business that were getting those free hotels, that were doing different brand deals with airlines or cruise ships, whatever whatever it was that had to do with travel. So I was in the back of my mind, but I always thought that you had to have like 2 million followers to be able to kind of get that. So I never thought that I would kind of get there. Or there was, it was going to be a process to get there. And so at that point, it was just more of documenting what we did and just kind of having fun with it. Yeah. So when we ask the question, what do you really want? Is, is time freedom and travel, is that a big part of your guys' is what you really want? Yeah. yeah. And I think with, um, with YouTube and social media, is, it's something that we can do on the road. Mm-hmm. I kind of wanted, as I was thinking of, you know, how can we, how can we make money or, or create this freedom of, of time? That was, that was something that always just was right there. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, you know, when we travel, we, we make videos on the road and we 
we're still being able to do what we love and work yeah while we're yeah anywhere in the world okay i love that because like we don't want to talk about we don't want to talk about our passion and our purpose and 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 bring money into the conversation yeah it feels bad right um but money's not a money's not a bad thing right no no, not at all um so when we talk about investing for your freedom you guys are passionate about travel you guys are already traveling the world you want to share that message and it's okay to monetize it right of course so I know that wasn't the reason why you started doing it with Life Through Postcards. That wasn't yeah. the reason why you started Origami Owl either, right? Yeah. But did you make some good money? Yeah. Or are you making some good money? Sure, <laughs> yeah, of right? Of course. No, for sure. And I think like, and it also is motivating when you when you get that check each month or every two weeks, whatever it is, it, it, it is motivating. It helps. Yeah. And then when when maybe you have a, a bad month or your videos don't do as well, it's it also motivates you to, yeah. all right, what do we got to do? What do we got to do next month to change that i mean money is necessary you got to have money to sure. money to live and yeah it is important but and when you're really good and passionate at what you do you should get paid for it yeah and it's oh it's interesting because it's always easier to talk about money from like situations five years ago to remember when you made your 200 dollars? yeah and you were so excited about that 200 dollars, right and you told your family like we're eating good tonight well, that's easy to talk about because it was six years ago or eight years ago or whatever yeah. but whatever we're currently doing sometimes it's a little bit challenging to to say, hey, yeah, we're, you know, we're making money off of this, but that's not why you're doing it, right? Yeah. So can you teach other people how to do that? Or is it something you can learn? For sure. I don't think I was like that three years ago. Mm-hmm. I think it's definitely been a complete mind shift. My mindset has shifted completely. And I think Bella's been a huge part. I know Bella's been a huge part of that. And hearing her origami owl story has inspired me to, shift that i I was on the road to kind of just i I just want to say kind of the uh average you know i was gonna i was gonna go to college which is i don't want to i don't being that average kind of life isn't isn't bad a no. lot of people live it and and they're happy and that's what's awesome and that's just kind of the road i was on but hearing bella and kind of her story and other people in my life that have kind of guided me has brought me to kind of what i'm doing now yeah when I first met you, you were a painting contractor. Yeah, I was working for a painting company. I was going out. I was getting sales for them, getting leads for them. And yeah. it was cool. It was a good friend of mine sure. that owned the company. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, and I, so I was a plumber by trade. Yeah. Right? Um, so I'm always really hesitant. Like, our goal here isn't to get people to quit their jobs. Right. Um, that's not really, that's why question number one is, what do you really want? Yeah. It doesn't, it's different for everybody. I think the goal is to find what you're passionate about. Mm, that's I good. think that is what it is. Like Dallin, watching him being the painting contractor, he wasn't happy. Yeah. Like he, he was always happy, but he wasn't like he didn't have the light in his eyes like he I does now. I couldn't do it for another 20 years. No. You know, it wasn't wasn't for me. Yeah, and um it's it's cool to see how his mindset has totally shifted since we started YouTube and see the passion that he has behind it and something that he loves to do. We love to make videos together. We love looking back on our memories. And we, we love creating those memories. And so it's so cool that something that we just love to do has been able to become a full-time job for Dallin and something that we could do together. Okay, so I feel like, I feel like uh, let's move into the, like, we talked about life through postcards. Obviously, you guys love traveling. You love a certain lifestyle. That's great. What, what are you guys working on now? I think our, I think... I mean, Bella still is obviously heavily involved with Origami yeah. Owl. Her goal is to continue growing that and being a big, a big impact in that community. Yeah, that's my number one passion, and that's something that I feel like will always be there is Origami Owl and um, creating that community with Origami Owl and connecting with others. And so that's always been my number one focus. Um, but I just I love what I do. And I think for me, I want to kind of just looking in the future. I want to continue growing Della Vlogs. It's our the YouTube channel, and I think I want to have a lot of um, motivation to continue helping people. I want to be able to help people travel. I want to put out some travel guides on things that we've learned as we travel and maybe put out a guide of growing our, how to grow a YouTube channel. Yeah. Just different, way, different things that I can put out there to help people find their passion or you know, learn. We, had, I, we have some, a lot of friends that are in the YouTube industry that have really, really helped us. And so I want to be able to pass that on too. Maybe that next couple that's looking to, or person, whoever it is, looking to do what we do. 
So talk to me more about the YouTube channel. It's called Della Vlogs. Yeah, Della. So it's funny. We kind of put took Dallin and Bella and made Merged it to Della. Together. Yeah, it's Della. So we just yeah we're we're grinding every day. We're trying to put out a video every single day, which is hard because I mean that's constant editing, constant filming concepting i mean i feel like that's that's really the hardest part thinking like all right what are we going to film next what are what do the people want to see and then making it all come to life so yeah. you guys do a video every day we try every day okay we try to yeah so far we've we're on a good streak right now we've been yeah. going good for the last couple of weeks i messed you guys up today <laughs> no, no man we're still going we're, <laughs> still we're going. gonna go home and get something done nice yeah um so what 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 started this like what what made you guys say we need to start Della Vlogs or did it just happen? So we actually started by putting up our travel videos and our travel videos, like we put a video up randomly on our channel. And at first it was actually under my name, the channel. Um, and it would get like 200 views and we would be like, oh, that's so cool. Or it would get like a thousand views. And we thought that was so cool. Um, but we didn't have like a community of people like we do now. Um, and one day we just decided to change it to Della Vlogs. You want to speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I just thought I always just. I mean, it was something that, like I said, we could do on the road. I was taking, when we would travel, I was taking a lot of time off work and I was like, I want to be able to do something while we we're on the road. So we just, it kind of just came together and called it Della and I don't know, it just kind of happened. Yeah, it, it kind of just happened randomly. It's cool to see how like our videos have even transformed and we've learned so much through this process and it's just been so fun. So without giving away too much, um, there wasn't some kind of process that you guys went through. You're not strategic on the backside. Like, um, how, how'd you, you guys have a hundred and how many followers? Like how many subscribers? We just hit 130,000. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday. I mean, that's a lot of people. Yeah. I'm trying to think like it's the secret sauce. I mean, is it just putting out good stuff? Well, like you guys are. I think a lot of people are like, how do you grow your YouTube channel? I put out a video and it doesn't get that many views and all this. I feel like we've been there. Like we put out, we've put out videos that have done terrible, but we don't delete those videos. We keep them up and we stay motivated to just keep putting out better content every single time. And so I think for us, um, the most important thing is being consistent with YouTube. And I think that's the number one tip that I would give to anybody starting a YouTube channel is tell your followers when you're going to post. We say we're going to post every day and we make that commitment and it's hard. Um, but if you want to put out, like my little sister has a YouTube channel and she says, I'm going to put out a video once a week. And she's only... 13 years old so she puts out a video once a week and that's when her followers know that she's going to post and so um yeah. for us i think consistency is important um and it's fun i remember the first four months we had absolutely zero growth yeah i mean we i was and i feel like that was when i was trying to put out like my best videos put out the most amazing travel videos from these places and it was hard man because i would put out a video i'd upload it and i would just sit there and i'm like all right i'm waiting for these views to start coming in it's nothing. I'm like, where's the money at? Apparently you can make a lot of money on YouTube. Like what's going on? And it was nothing. And then I'm like, I mean, Bella just kept me motivated. We got to keep going. And all of a sudden we got 10 subscribers and that turned to 20. And then those 20 started sharing it. And then some we hit a hundred and just kind of started. And then I feel like once you, once you, once you get to 10,000 and 20, it just starts rolling. And then we just kind of, things are rolling right now. Things have been real good the past couple of months and we're just going to keep that keep it rolling yeah. yeah i know when i sat at dinner with you guys you guys were really strategic and i don't know how many subscribers you had at that point in time but probably a thousand yeah, yeah probably yeah you guys were very clear at that point in time on what you guys were going to do i yeah. think i feel like there was like you know we were talking about the i don't know what what's the words you gotta there, there's certain, certain types of words you gotta put on your oh, oh the yeah. tags. tags yeah yeah, yeah. So there is kind of like a methodology. Yeah, yeah for it, sure. Right? I mean, like, I think I think you got to find your your niche and find like what what kind of audience you're going to target. And then there's a lot of different ways. YouTube helps you out a lot. It wants you to grow. There's a lot of ways to put in tags to kind of target that community. Mm -hmm. Create mean, a the, good thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. The thumbnail is important. I mean, just a think good of title. I always just thought like when I got on YouTube and scrolled through the random homepage, what videos brought me in? Yeah. I mean, I remember like I would saw a video. I don't know, this one always stands out to me. There's a guy that was in the ocean and he had like a drop of blood and there was a big old shark that was photoshopped in the background and it was, the title was like, do, do sharks really smell blood? But that thumbnail of the, I knew the shark was fake, Yeah. but I was just like, 
I was curious. Yep. And I wanted to see. And so I mean, I mean, I mean, don't you don't have to make a a fake thumbnail, but I just thought I just like things like that. Like you got to have a good thumbnail, a good title, something that's gonna drive your audience to want to watch your video. Mm -hmm. And so just things like that that kind of helped us grow over the past. So why do you guys? I mean, you put a lot of time and energy into making these videos every single day. I yeah. Know. And we prank each other a lot, yeah. and it's really hard to do. Yeah, we, yeah, we've we've learned that our community likes when we prank each other. Yeah, I saw one. I saw your truck full of like oh, shipping man, pop, that, that popcorns or something. Yeah. That was a bad one. I ordered on Amazon good. packing peanuts, and I got like ten bags of yeah, them. Yeah, I saw them on your porch. Yeah, yeah. they're everywhere. Did you like, really? You yeah, no, I totally did. They were in like everywhere. red bags or we something. We were out of like town when they came, and I saw on our cameras. I'm like, what is that 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 showed up? But they were just in the boxes, and then. I was like, oh, I'm just working on a project. Yeah. No big deal. I'm like, I was like, okay. I have to bring him to work. They need me to bring him to work. And then I filled this car with him. Yeah, she got me good. I yep. got him good. So you guys obviously put a lot of time and energy into this. What? I'm, I'm just trying to figure out why. Hey, maybe we don't even know why yet. <laughs> no, I think. You just love it? I think we do love it. I think it is something that's fun for us. Like, sometimes it is hard to get videos up every day. Especially, I work nine to five. So, um. Or 10 to 5. It just it differs depending on the day. But um, I feel like for us, it's hard to get a video up every day. But we do it because it's fun. We love it. We're seeing growth right now, which is exciting. And I feel like it keeps us motivated. Our goal for the year is to hit a million subscribers. Okay. And I truly feel like we're going to hit that by January 1st of 2021. I feel like we're going to do it. And it's going to be it's going to be. It's going to. I'm putting it out there right now. Yeah. It's but yeah, no, happen. it's definitely doable. That totally. Totally can can happen. Yeah. I can't wait to be 10 years in the future and sit down with our kids, maybe 20 years, and be like, hey, look at this mm -hmm. cool thing that we did or look what we did, you know, and have it all documented. Like, yeah. it's funny. I'll go over to my parents' house and my mom will pull out scrapbooks of, like, my elementary schools or, like, things that we did as a family. And I think it's just evolved. Now we're going to pull up YouTube videos and we're going to have hundreds of videos of, what we've done and yeah. cool things and our adventures and things like that. That's cool. That's a good so, reason. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it doesn't always a, have to be about money. I wasn't trying yeah. to. Yeah. No, it's just, yeah. no, no. That's always been one of our number one motivation motivators is um, we want our kids to see these moments in our life and we think it'll be cool to reflect on in the, totally. in the future. I love it. And it's cool to me that people want to see it too. Like yeah. that people are subscribing and becoming a part of our Della fam and yeah. wanting to be a part of it. So you guys are going to get to a million subs. They call it subs, right? Yeah. Subs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm like learning the lingo. Yeah, you're, like, you're doing good. Yeah. Um, how are you going to do that? Because you guys, you're, you're going to, you're going to basically, I mean, you're going to increase by, uh, you're at 130? 130, yeah. 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 So how are you going to do that? I mean, I think what are, what are, give me, give me three things that you're really going to do to, is it just like. It's a Dallin's thing. Yeah, yeah. So. I think a, I think a big thing as well too is we have a lot of friends in the industry that um have helped us some that have we have we have good friends that have 2 million subscribers right now and some that have 50,000 but I think um surrounding yourself with those kind of people and gaining information from them and they've also helped us they we've done videos with them where they've introduced us to their community and some of their communities come over to see us and we've helped others grow and so I think I think that's a big thing that we're going to really focus on this year is spending a lot of time with people that are also in that same community as us and uh, collaborate with them, okay. be a part of that. That's also, yeah, one thing I also, whenever I speak at a school or something, I say surround yourself with people who know more than you. Mm -hmm. And you said that on this podcast, and I love that um, because that is important. Surround yourself. We, we surrounded ourselves with people who knew more about YouTube than we did, yeah. and we learned from them, and that has helped us grow. So. Totally. I, I have a mentor that always says, I always want to be the dumbest guy in the room. Right. Or another way that he says it too is if, um, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you need to find a bigger room. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and what I'm really, inter like you, I think the thing that a lot of people don't understand is marketing has just changed. Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. And so like there's, you know, you've got all these businesses, like 65, 70% of all people are employed by small businesses. And what I think the small business owner in general doesn't understand, and whether it's a real estate investor, whether it's somebody running a plumbing and heating company, whether it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's Origami Owl, what people don't understand is like the, the core aspects of business have just changed a little bit. Yeah. 
And so what we used to have to do is we'd have to go to a chamber of commerce business after hours and we'd have to rub elbows, right? Or you'd have to pay to go to an event or whatever. Not, I'm not saying events are out, but really what you guys are actually, you, you just collaborated, right? Right. And people don't really fully understand that when somebody says collab, right? That's the, yeah, I think that's that's the lingo. Is that's that the lingo? lingo? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what we used to, business 10 or 15 years ago, it was like, okay, I'm a plumbing and heating company. I'm going to collab with this general contractor. I'm going to collab with, the yellow pages. Right. Um, so mar- I'm going to collab with a website designer. That was like marketing 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Yeah. What I think people don't understand is business is like exponentially shifting right now. And so when you guys, your key number one is you're networking. Right. The old term was networking. Yeah, yeah. Now it's collabing. Yeah, I guess it's the same thing. That's interesting. I've, I've actually never thought of that, but that, yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what it is. The thing that I want my listeners and my audience to understand is that you guys are on the front edge of something <clears throat> that if we don't get a hold of as business owners, we're going to get left behind, and it's happening so fast. Yeah. This great. is why I want to start this podcast. Number one, I want to share um, information, and I want to bring people in that are smart and good at what they do, and I want to inspire people, yeah. but also everything is shifting so fast. If you don't have a personal brand in the world today, if you're not using social media, YouTube, all of this stuff to leverage whatever that audience is, back in the day we wanted an email list, and I'm not saying we don't want an email list, still we do, Right. Um, but back in the day it was just about an email list, and before that it was about a mailing list. Yeah. Now it's about, it, it's a subscriber list, right? Yeah, no, totally. The power of those eyeballs, and you guys have been, you, you, you kids, I'm gonna call you guys kids. <laughs> you guys have been talking about this for five years now, and, and us, us older people are yeah. just beginning to understand it. When we had the yellow pages, remember, did you guys ever use a phone book? I sat on it. I used at to sit on them at dinner. <laughs> yeah, I used to too. <laughs> that was eyeballs back in the day. That's so yeah. funny. And so business owners, this is why I'm hitting on this because nothing has actually changed. It's just a different dynamic. Exactly. Um, and this is where the world's going. So number one, you said you're, you're the right people. You're collaborating with the right people. Yeah. Give me another one. Um... Top three things you're going to do to go from 130 to a million. Yeah, we keep using that word, but I feel like that is the number one thing. Being it amazes consistent. me how there's been there's been weeks where we didn't post either for two weeks straight, and it amazes me how we've seen such a a hit on our on our channel that a negative hit where people want to. You think of it as a as I look at it as like a, a TV show, you know when when. You know every Monday night that show's going to come on. Mm. You're going to wait for it all weekend. You're going to wait for it for that day. And if it doesn't, you're going to be disappointed. If they, for whatever happens, it doesn't come out. Yeah. And so I think, I think people, whether it's kids or whoever it is, get home from school or from work and they're waiting for that upload to, to be there. And if it's not there, they're going to be disappointed. So consistency, we gotta, if we promise something, we got we to gotta deliver and, and put out, put out the, the content. So you guys talked about networking, getting in the right rooms, the collabs, if you will, yeah. right? Um, and then we talked about consistency, which I think is huge. And that goes with anything, whether it was Organ Al or whatever. So right. one more thing, you guys are like, I mean, you guys are going to get some exponential growth here this year. I love that you threw that out there, by the way, because she's not even, she's just like, okay, she's we're doing it. it. Like, yeah. yeah, we just, happening. and that <laughs> usually happens. But anyway, another conversation. So give me one more. What's, what's the third thing that um, you guys really feel like you need to focus on to get exponential growth? I think what I like about our our channel is I think we do a little bit of both. I think we're tr- we we mix it up. We'll we'll do some travel videos and then we'll add some entertainment in there with with the funny pranks and sometimes we'll do like challenge videos or, or reaction videos. And so I think we're just trying to kind of hit, we kind of have an overall niche, but then we're kind of trying to hit the the inside of different categories of of what we do. Mm-hmm. So I think I think what also we want to do with this in this year is kind of broaden that niche, kind of start hitting other, other categories, other content that we put out. Um, we also have, we're also going to start doing a little bit of the merch. That's another lingo, some merchandise. Some gonna, merch. Yeah. Put out some, uh, some shirts, some stickers, things like that to help just kind of put out our, our brand a little more. Do you guys have something um, that you guys talk about, like at the dinner table, when you're all inspired about what you're going to be doing over the? Like, is it something just inspiring people to live a better life, or is there any kind of like when you guys are there's? I think it's just just like enjoy life. I mean, I think that I look at it as you, I don't know, you never know when your your time up is going to time's up here, and so just 
enjoy well, life. We just have a lot of fun. Your, what's your catchphrase? Every video, Dallin says one thing. And I think that kind of like is exactly. Oh what yeah, we about. talk about uh, how stoked we are, and our yeah. stoke levels are. We say what our high. stoke levels are at the beginning of every video. So we're like, guys, the stoke levels are high today, and like. It's funny to see all of our followers will comment like, the Stoke Lovers are amazing today or hi or whatever. Yeah, just like be stoked out there. And, yeah. And enjoy. And that's what we're about. Yeah. Okay, so I appreciate like all the transparency and just going, it's what an inspiring story. 26 and 23, right? Yeah. yeah. Man. So I'm, I heard kids mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Hopefully in the future. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We're just kind of having fun right now and we'll see where that goes. That's definitely going to be the next step though. Yeah. Well, the one thing I, I mean, kids are fun too, right? So anyway, I'm not trying to encourage you guys to have kids. Well, what's your, what's your uh, one sentence advice on that? On having kids? Yeah. Um, you know, we've always just treated our kids as another person. Um, cool. That's awesome. So I don't know if you're talking specifically about you. No, no. I mean, or... just like at what, at what point did you feel like you, I mean, you were, you were grinding in your business. It's funny. I heard your, your wife did a Facebook post where you left for a couple months to do your thing. At what point did you feel like that was okay to kind of jump in the next step? Um, I actually jumped to the next step because I was missing out on our kids. I see. Um, I was an employee up till I, I missed the entire third pregnancy. Oh, I see. Cause I was working out of town 90 hours a week. And yeah. So Kara's, Kara's dream, Kara's dream was to always be a stay at home mom. So we like, that was the goal. Yeah. Like, I mean, Let's get to work. Right. You know, that's kind of how. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, um, so what does an average work day look like for each of you? So I normally go to the office around nine or 10 and I have a bunch of different responsibilities there. Every day is different when I'm at the nest. Like you never know what it's going to be. Um, we have so many fun, like team meetings and all that different kind of stuff. But, um, I'll be at the nest usually for until like four or five o'clock. Um, depending on the day, some days I'm traveling for work or doing different things like that. Um, and then I get home and we'll film. Um, yeah. So while she's at work, I'll usually, what I'll do is I'll take the videos that from the previous days, make sure they all get uploaded correctly, have the thumbnails done and, um, either concept the video for that day or, you know, get our, get our content ready for, for Instagram. We don't only just do YouTube. Obviously we are hitting Instagram, Facebook, different all different platforms and um, make sure that's all, all ready to go. And then we'll film a video that evening and make sure that it's all edited properly and yeah. get it going for the next day. A lot of times I come home and I'm pranked right away. So like sometimes I'm like, I hope I don't come home to something like yeah. yesterday or the day before that. I I'm came... at the advantage because while she's at work, I got the time to Yeah, yeah. I came home and going. he had destroyed like half of my makeup drawer <laughs> with a hammer. Oh my goodness! That, hey, you, know. you can watch that on YouTube. <laughs> oh wow, it was a good one. Um, so I got I got a lot of messages for uh, it was a trend going around where the the husband or or boyfriend takes her makeup, her old makeup, and not old makeup, my makeup. Okay, I got one new one, but <laughs> that was a mistake. But um, yeah, and smashes it with a hammer. So you just never know what you're gonna come home to. Yeah, it's really crazy. fun. Some days, um, he doesn't know what to expect either, and I prank him back really right. good. So. That's, That's awesome. Fun. We have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. Cool. You guys had talked about um, the grind, so it's not all just. Man, it's tough. It's. I remember we actually we actually have a guy now that that does help us edit because with that goal of putting out a video every single day, it's just. It was tough, man. Uh, we'd film during the day, and then I would I would sit down and I'd edit at night. To like one in the morning. Yeah, till one morning. in the morning, get some sleep, and then the next day we're filming, and it's just it was nonstop, and so. Uh, I remember like that first, I want to say like six or seven months where we didn't have an editor. I was just, I was Constantly. going nonstop all night editing, filming the next all day. day editing. Yeah. yeah. And then when we would travel, that would just be a whole nother thing like on top of it. So it was, it was really hard. It was tough. There's a lot that goes on behind it, but, um, yeah. But I think for it. us, like the grind to us is like, I'm always thinking, okay, what am I going to do? to either prank him next or what what's another great video that we could sit down and do together like one of our next videos we want to film is doing a reaction to our wedding video three mm. years later yes yeah, so wow. we're, gonna we're watch probably gonna film that today yeah. yeah so it'll be a cool one um so we're always just concepting different things like that and always trying to keep up with the latest trends that's cool well i really appreciate your guys's time so um what 
what's some final last words? What, what advice would you give to people out there just looking to invest for their freedom? Yeah. I would just say, man, just go after it. I want to touch on a point. Bella said at the very beginning, back when Origami was just starting, they didn't have a website. They didn't have a company phone. They didn't have an office space. I think people get so caught up with that. They're like, I want to start a YouTube channel, but I don't have the latest camera. I don't yeah. have the latest microphones, my computer. I mean, I know I know a couple that they all their YouTube videos are done on the on their iPhone. The iPhone shoots an incredible video. It's perfect. Yeah. You can buy a five dollar tripod that holds up your phone and make videos with that. You don't need the latest editing software. I mean, just I feel like so many there's so many I wanna call them excuses that, that come in when people want to start because they think that they can't do it without that. Right? Yeah. Just just go after it. You don't need the best website. You don't need any of that to get started. That all just yeah. kind of falls in place later as you, you keep going, but just go after it. I, I totally it. agree with that. I feel like, yeah, a lot of times people are like, I'm going to do this when I lose the weight. I'm going to do this when I yeah. have this. And it's like, you're never going to do it if you have that in your head. And so um, a lot of times like, I'll be like, oh, this isn't, this wasn't filmed with the perfect camera. But Dallin's like, no, it's okay. We, it, it's real and it's raw, and we're just gonna put it out there, yeah. having content, and um, don't wait to do things and just go after it. I wish I like, we would have started like the YouTube channel four years ago. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Totally. A lot. We did. We actually have been there though, where we we were those people that were like, we're not gonna start a YouTube video. We're not gonna start a YouTube channel until we have the perfect brand name for it and the perfect this yeah, and this totally. and we did wait for a couple of years but then one day it kind of this flip switched in our head and we're like we're gonna we're gonna do it no and more we're waiting gonna, we no gotta, more waiting yeah get through it. one of my mentors always says perfect is the enemy of done yeah, yeah. 100%. that yeah. is amazing i need to write that down yeah it's a good one, it's right? a good good one. one. i have this uh, other mentor uh, we're actually gonna ho hopefully go interview him because i think he's pushing 85 90 years old oh, but that's cool this is this is like the 15 year old version of that or 20 year old version he says get off your can do what you can and can the rest yeah like, exactly <laughs> like yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. but i love that you guys brought that out perfect is the en enemy of done you know especially in this day and age with video and audio and all that stuff like yeah everybody just wants perfection and consistency is what you said right yeah and you yep. can't be consistent without getting started you got to just get exactly. started right just so go after it that. and everything else just kind of falls in place as you start going yeah things yeah. just start coming your way and it all works out well that's why i put the adjust at the end of the five keys to freedom what do you really want why exactly. do you want it what are you going to do to get it measure results and adjust, adjust. Yeah. yeah because if you don't get started you guys won't remember this but before power steering in cars mm -hmm. like you couldn't turn the wheel unless you How were moving power steering go out. <laughs> oh so yeah you have to be moving in order to turn the wheel right? right it's like really hard to turn the wheel and i've always thought about that in business and anything else until you get moving you can't really, you can't really and turn and adjust. Full of analogies, so. man. That's, that's cool. I need to write I know. these down. I need to write all. I need to well, it's going to be recorded, you. so you just I'm listen to yeah. it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your time. Anything yeah. else we need to talk about? No, thank oh, you man. so much for having us okay. today. This has been so fun. Yeah, I appreciate you guys being here.